Hello and welcome or welcome back. Things look a little bit different. That's because they are. I'm in a new room, lots more space to film. Not fully finished setting things up yet, so things will look a bit different again in the future, but for now, they'll look like this. Now, back to the actual point of the video. Today, I'm going to be doing one of my favorite things in the entire hobby, kit bashing. But before that, let me tell you a little story. Way back when, one of my dream armies was the Chaos Dwarves. And I'm not talking about the old metal ones, I'm talking about the ridiculously cool Forge World Legions of Asgore. Now, that in itself was the problem. At the time, I didn't have the money or skills to build a fully Forge World army. And then, tragically, before I could, they were taken out of production. So today, I'm going to be remedying my lack of Chaos Dwarves by building myself a Demon Smith. Like any good hobby YouTuber would, I'll start by getting this guy out the box with a little bit of arcane wizardry. Then I can clip out any bits of the model I'm going to need. With all that clipped off, the rest of it can go over there. Once everything's off the sprue, I can dry fit it to get a better idea of how everything goes together. Knowing this will make changing parts of the model later on much easier. With a good idea of how the model goes together and its scale in mind, I can start to do the next part, cleaning up the mold lines. There weren't really many mold lines on the model, just a few areas where it attached onto the sprue. With that done, I can start making my first changes to the model. The first thing I'm going to do is replace the left hand. Usually the model will be wielding a hammer, but I want to give it an open palm. So it's time to dive into the bits box and find some severed limbs. I found two spare hands that would work, one from Marathi and one from the Dark Oath Warcry Warband. After testing both pieces against the model, I've decided to go with the Dark Oath hand. Even though the pose of Marathi's hand is more menacing, the chunkier fingers work better. With a decision made, I can start chopping things, starting with this bit of arm. Using a scalpel rather than clippers will get me a cleaner cut, which means it'll glue on nicer. With our appendage bisected, I can start to clean up the little bit of fur left over from the van brace. With the hand all cleaned up, it's just a matter of dry fitting it to get the right pose. With the dry fitting done, it's in a pose I like, we can put a dab of glue on there and get it stuck down. I'll come back to this hand in a moment, but first we'll work on his other arm whilst the glue dries. In his other hand, he's holding his weapon, but this hammer just isn't looking chaosy enough, so we'll have to go into the bits box. I managed to find a load of different weapons from a bunch of kits that I think would work. Now it's just a matter of holding things next to each other until something looks good. After a long time deliberating, I think I've narrowed it down to two, maybe three options. Now with a vague idea of size, I can start putting things together. Before adding on any weapons though, I'm going to glue together the front and the back of the torso. With that done, we can move back onto weaponry. But before I actually glue down any weapons, I'm going to remove the iconography off his shoulder. I'll carefully cut the markings off and then use the back of the scalpel to scrape away anything left like you would with mold lines. I'm taking care to get a nice smooth surface, otherwise it'll show up when I paint it. Once I've finished up doing that one, I'll do the same thing on the smaller one on the forearm. Even though this one's a lot smaller and appears more fiddly, it's actually a lot easier as it's completely flat, unlike the shoulder. Now it's time to do the weapons. I'll start by cutting the head off the hammer. Like earlier, I'll use the scalpel to get a nice clean cut. This bit could be really useful for other kit bashes, and it's gone forever. With the head of the hammer lost to the void, I can more carefully this time cut the blade off this chaos weapon. It didn't cut quite so nicely this time, so I'll have to give it a little clean up. With that one done, I can also cut the head off this nice little mace, as I'm still unsure on which one I want to use. With that cut, I can then glue the arm onto the body, as this will make deciding which weapon I want to use a little bit easier. Once that glue is dry, I can move on to choosing a weapon. First off, I'm going to test out the mace. It's looking pretty cool, but something about it's not quite working. So, next up, I'll try the big cleaver-like blade from the Chaos Knights kit. This immediately looks better than the previous option. It makes the silhouette of the model a lot more imposing. So with the decision made, I can put a dab of glue on and stick it in place. With both hands now stuck on, I'm really starting to get a sense of what the finished piece is going to look like. At this point, I was about to remove the decoration on the inside of the cape, but eventually decided against it, as I thought it would leave too much of a flat, empty space. The decoration on the outside of the cape, however, I am going to remove, as it doesn't quite fit the vibe I'm looking for. 
Like earlier, I'm just carefully cutting away the majority of the design with a scalpel, and then I'll scrape off anything left. Unlike earlier, this didn't work out quite so well, as the curvature of the cape made scraping it almost impossible. To tidy up the mess left behind, I'll just paint on a little bit of plastic glue to smooth out the surface. Now for the all-important step of gluing back on the bits I broke while messing with the cape. With that done, I can start to clean up the last bit of the body, the second pauldron. Just like last time, I'm using a scalpel to cut away the detail before scraping it back to leave us a nice flat surface. Now that the pauldron is nice and smooth, we can glue it down onto the other shoulder. With the pauldron glued on, we can set the body aside to start work on the head. We'll come back and add a few more details later on. The head is going to need a lot of changes if we're going to take it from regular dwarf to chaos dwarf. So I'll start by snipping off the front portion of the helmet and then carving away with the scalpel any of the bits left over. Next I'll remove the nose guard from the helmet as this doesn't quite fit the chaos dwarf aesthetic. I'm being very careful at this point not to ruin the rest of the face. At this point, with the nose guard removed, I realized it had taken all traces of the nose with it, so I'd have to completely re-sculpt that later on. I'm also going to remove the moustache, as I really like how the Forge World Demon Smith looks without one. And of course, I end up saving these bits. Something I build in the future will end up with a big old moustache. Now with the moustache out of the way, I can start to carve in a bit of a hole that will end up being a more open, shouty mouth. I'm not worrying about being careful with this bit, the entire area is going to be covered in green stuff later anyway. Now to fix up this wonky chunk of plastic that was a face, I'll cut off a nice strip of green stuff. As always, I'll cut the middle out to avoid any lumps. With my green stuff all mixed up, I can start to try and replace the nose. I'll start with a thin metal sculpting tool to try and get some of the basic shapes in place. Once I've got it looking somewhat like a nose, I can move over to a silicon sculpting tool to refine the features a little. Once I've got that main shape all done, I can start to refine it even further. I'll put a small ball of green stuff on either side of the nose and blend those in. And that's the nose done. It's not perfect, but I still think it beats some of the 4th edition sculpts. Now whilst that sets, I can go back to the body and work on some more of those details. Now, one of my favourite pieces of artwork for the Chaos Dwarves has a demon smith holding a ball of blue fire, so mine's going to have one too. To start making the little flame, I'll start with a teardrop shaped piece of green stuff and just work it into the hand with a metal sculpting tool. Once it's nicely blended in, I can start to refine the shape. I'll use the fine point of a scalpel to get some nice wispy flames. With that done, we can set it aside and move back onto working on the head. Now it's time to work on the most important part of any demon smith, the big hat. I'm going to base the style of the hat on the Warhammer World exclusive demon smith, as it's my favourite, and I think it's the most obviously chaos dwarfy. For the base of the hat, it's just a massive, slightly conical cylinder. Once it's set, I can add the rest of the details on top. Earlier on, I drilled a hole in the face to be a mouth. It's time to finish that up. Some tiny worms of green stuff, I'll very carefully make a top and bottom lip. I can also take this opportunity to fix any bits of the beard I ruined earlier by blending them up towards the lip with some beardy texture. Now, this is a Chaos Dwarf, not a regular dwarf, so it's time to make it look like one. To do that, I'm going to give him a big scary pair of tusks. To do that, into the lips I'm going to press a couple of green stuff spikes that I made earlier. And with that, the face is all done. Overall, I think the face looks pretty good, even if it does have a bit more of the 4th edition vibe than I was originally going for. It being a halfway point between the two styles probably isn't a bad thing. It does mean I could theoretically build an army out of both ranges, and it would sit comfortably next to both, maybe even bridge the gap a little. The only real problem I see now is that beard. It's not looking nearly chaos -y enough. So I'm going to use the age-old chaosifying technique of slap some skulls on it. I'll very carefully chop the front off a skull and then trim down the beard decorations to make sure I get a nice solid stick. I'll do that a couple more times and there you have it, a very stylish, chaosy beard. With the beard looking very snazzy, it's time to finish off his fashionable headwear. For the trim on the hat, I'm using a 50-50 mix of milliput and green stuff as I find it can hold fine detail better. To make the trim, I'll take a thin piece of the mix and cut it down to size, then I'll flatten it out to get a nice smooth edge. The trim's looking good, but it's still looking a little bland, so I'll need to add some details. 
For the first bit of detail, and I'll use the same technique as the trim to add some of that chaosy arrow motif. I'll slowly prod at it with a silicon sculpting tool until I get the nice sharp shape that I'm looking for. With the first arrow pretty much done, I was looking back at the face and realized it needed a couple more bits of trim down either side. So I got a couple of small bits of putty and used the same technique as earlier to get the trim going down either side of the face. As I worked on it though, I started to second guess myself as things started to look messy and overcrowded. But then, suddenly, and quite unexpectedly, things went from very messy to looking very neat, and it ended up framing the face really nicely. So, with the trim all finished, I can get back to sculpting the arrows. Using exactly the same technique as I did on the first one, I can put another arrow on either side of the helmet. The hardest part of this was making sure that they were symmetrical. It didn't matter so much if they didn't match the one on the front, but they had to be equal on both sides. After a good long while of sculpting and re-sculpting, I did manage to get them symmetrical. Now for the last thing before we put this to the side to let it set, I want to add some visual interest to the top of the hat. I'll add a small circle to the center, which will be the base for a nice big chaosy spike later on. Now whilst that's setting, I'll go back to working on the body. I'll use the same technique as I did on the hat to add some more decoration to his armor. And for those of you better at planning ahead than me, you may be thinking to yourself, isn't the beard going to cover that up? And the answer you're looking for is yes, pretty much entirely. So with our pretty much pointless decoration done, we can move back onto the head. So the head isn't looking nearly detailed or imposing enough, so I'll add a pair of horns onto the sides to add some extra width. To make the horns, I'll take some of that 50-50 mix I used earlier and shape it into spikes. I'll then give it a slight curve and attach it to the side of the head. I'll then simply repeat the process for the other side. At this point, the horns are insanely fragile, so we'll have to let them set before we can do anything else. So yet again, we're moving back over to the body. At the moment, this pauldron is looking very boring, so I'm going to add a nice bull skull to it to add an extra Hashut vibe to the model. I'll start with a vaguely triangular shaped piece and then carve away the sides until I have something resembling a skull. Now that I've got everything roughly cut in, I can go back in with a silicon tool to smooth everything out. This will give all the edges a crisper, more refined look. Now with the shape done, I can roughly sketch in where the features need to go. With a metal sculpting tool, I'll roughly dot where the eyes and nose need to be, and then with a silicon sculpting tool, I'll come back in and define the features some more. With the most hideous rough sketch for the features done, I can add the horns on in a similar fashion to I did on the helmet. With both the horns in place, all that's left to do now is fix the features. And like that, as if by magic, and definitely not because I forgot to record it, the pauldron is all finished. And with that done, I'm all finished up on the body, and it's time to assemble the miniature. So say goodbye to that arrow I sculpted earlier, because I doubt you'll see it again. Before I could build it, however, there was one last thing I had to do and that was remove all of the excess glue from where I'd attached the head onto a sprue. After all that, it's finally time to recapitate my Chaos Dwarf. I'm using super glue for this instead of plastic glue, as there's still some residue left inside of the head and it wouldn't be a strong bond. Now that he's got a good head on his shoulders, it's time to give him some ground to stand on. My plan for this army is to use them for the old world, even though they're not one of the core factions, so they won't be getting any new or re-release models. Games Workshop has however announced they will be getting new rules. If I remember correctly, the Demon Smith was on a 20mm base, so that means for the old world we'll need to bump it up to 25mm. To start things off, I'll get a little bit of cork bark to build up some elevation on his base. Adding elevation like this is a great way for a character model to stand out in an army, and the way I posed his weapon, he wouldn't fit on the base otherwise. With my piece of cork bark chosen, I can start trimming it down to fit the base. I'll start by cutting it in half, and then shaving off some of the edges. Cutting it in half has left some very unnatural sharp edges, so I'll rough them up with my scalpel a bit. With these edges looking slightly more natural, I can find the exact position I wanted for it again. 
With the ground texture in a good spot, I can start to dry fit the model on top and get it in the best pose possible. Now that everything's decided on, I can use some super glue to stick it down. I use quite a bit of super glue for this, as the cork bark tends to absorb it. As it's drying, I'll press it down nice and hard to make sure it's well adhered and minimize the risk of it flaking off. Now that that's firmly stuck in place, we can move on to re-dry fitting the model. With the dry fitting looking good, I can glue the model down onto the base. I'm holding this in place quite tightly because plastic onto cork bark is just one of those bonds that never wants to stay. This model comes with a sculpted piece of plastic base which I find makes basing a whole lot easier as you can remove the model and still get the pose you want. With some milliput and green stuff I'm just going around all the edges of the plastic piece making sure they're tied in nicely with the cork bark. I'm also sculpting over any bits of the cork bark that just don't look rocky enough. I'm also going to be sculpting around the bottom of the cork bark to tie it in with the base. This is one of my favourite methods of doing rocky bases, as after you've finished sculpting there's not really much else to it. All that's left to do now is glue the model down and we're done building. Now I think it's time for some fancy reveals. As you can see, I did a few more little bits to the base, but nothing too special, just some texture paste. I think there's just one more thing it needs, a splash of paint. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like and maybe even subscribe. I've got a whole lot more videos planned for the future and they're bound to be fun. Also, I'd love to know what you guys want to see me build for this army next. Maybe some infernal guard, maybe some bull centaurs. Leave a comment down below. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.